Welcome to Catalina Treats Gluten-Free Bakery. I'm Jesse, and I'm so happy to bring you some information about baking soda and baking powder. I'm here with Teresa, and she's going to give us some information on the science behind baking. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Tell us about baking and the chemical reaction that we're looking for to make our breads and cupcakes and donuts rise and make them pretty. So baking soda, the chemical name is sodium hydrogen carbonate or some people will know it as sodium bicarbonate or bicarbonate of soda so it's an alkaline compound so when you add baking soda to your recipe um, to a mixture usually your recipe will have some sort of acid in it so maybe it's lemon juice maybe it's vinegar um, sometimes milk can be acidic or yogurt and then when you add the acid and the alkaline together, or in the mixture, the alkaline is now known as a base, um, you get this chemical reaction, which leads to the formation of carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is a type of gas, and in your mixture, it forms these bubbles, which causes your mixture to rise and to get bigger, and then will cause your cakes or whatever you're baking to get fluffier. And so um, also baking powder, is different from baking soda so that's a very important thing maybe you've tried changing them up and realizing that your recipe just went kaput because <laughs> they're not the same thing um, so baking powder has baking soda in it or in or, or something sort of similar to so a baking soda um, or another type of alkaline and it'll also have a weak acid they're all in a dry form and then a type of starch maybe it's corn flour or potato starch or rice flour so the starch is there to absorb any moisture in a baking powder so as soon as you add your baking powder to your mixture the acid and the alkaline or the base react and then you get the formation of the carbon dioxide so key difference is baking powder has the acid and alkaline soda just has the alkaline so you're adding the baking soda and whatever flours and stuff to your milks and, and um, like you said, the acid, the lemon juice, that's gonna start that reaction. And so you want to get it into your breads into a hot oven right away so, so it can have that chemical reaction. Is that true? Yeah, so because the reaction happens really quickly, especially if it's baking soda, the reaction as soon as you add to the mixture just starts happening. So you don't want the carbon dioxide gas to just disappear into the air you want it to be trapped within your mixture your batter so in order for it to be trapped in your mixture and your batter and for it to not just disappear you need to put it straight away or as soon as possible into your oven so your mixture retains the gas and then continue to expand and you get the fluffiness if you leave it, leave it for too long the reaction finishes the carbon dioxide just disappears um, off into the air and you're gonna get like a flat cake or some sort of flat baked good. So that's the main reason why. Baking with gluten-free flours, there's a little bit of a different reaction because there's no gluten for it to bind to, correct? Yeah, so I think that's really important when you're making like bread recipes. The carbon dioxide will usually bind to the gluten and that's why you're doing kneading because you're developing the gluten so the carbon dioxide binds better to the gluten but when you don't have gluten in the recipe, um, it kind of changes the whole chemistry of things. So that can kind of um, throw things off. Okay, so, so having baking soda and an acid for it to react with, like lemon juice, and then getting it into the oven right away, those are the, mm. the key components. Or just the baking powder and getting that into the oven right away, because yeah. that's gonna have its own reaction. So the baking powder just needs water to start reacting. So the thing about double acting baking powder is that it has two types of acids or weak acids. Um, so the first type of acid will start reacting with the, like for instance, the bicarbonate as soon as the mixture starts, as soon as you start mixing. The second type will only start reacting with the bicarbonate um, when you put it in the oven and the temperature exceeds um, about 140 degrees Fahrenheit or 60 degrees Celsius. So the good thing about that is that you're not as constrained by time with the double acting. So although it's still good to put it in the oven as soon as possible, um, if you don't, like, it's not the end of your 
um, batter or your dough. Single lactin just has one type of acid and that acid will start reacting as soon as you start mixing um, the batter. And that one, you, that one is very important to put in the oven as soon as possible. But I think generally we get um, double lactic baking powder as far as I'm aware um, in the supermarkets and in the stores. So it would be better yeah, to have the double um, acting for gluten-free goods. Okay. Yeah, so you can get double the action. Awesome. Hey, that's so good to know. And so I have to ask, what is your favorite baked good? My favorite baked good? Oh, I'm dairy free. So it's going to be something dairy free. Um, probably something chocolatey. I'm going to go for a chocolate brownie, a dairy okay. free chocolate brownie. <laughs> Those are great. One of my favorites also. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you for being here all the way from London. I really appreciate it. It's such good information to have. So it'll help improve my baking skills as well. Thank you for having me. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this with your friends and family. We're always creating great new recipes at Catalina Treats Gluten-Free Bakery.